Operation Argus was a series of United States, low yield, high atmosphere, nuclear weapons tests, and missile tests, secretly conducted during August and September 1958 over the South Atlantic Ocean. The Argus tests took 11 days from start to finish, with the first launch on 27 August and the final launch on the 6th of September. They were performed by the Defense Nuclear Agency, in conjunction with the Explorer 4 space mission. Operation Argus was conducted between the nuclear test series Operation Hardtack I and Operation Hardtack II. Contractors from Lockheed Aircraft Corporation as well as a few personnel and contractors from the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission were on hand as well. The tests were proposed by Nicholas Christoph Ilos in an unpublished paper of what was then the Livermore branch of the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory as a means to verify the Christoph Ilos effect, which argued that high-altitude nuclear detonations would create a radiation belt in the extreme upper regions of the Earth's atmosphere. Such belts would be similar, in effect, to the Van Allen radiation belts. Argus was implemented rapidly after inception due to forthcoming bands on atmospheric and exoatmospheric testing in October 1958. Two missiles, with warheads 136 and 227 kilograms, to be launched within one month of each other, originating from a single site. The missiles were to be detonated at altitudes of 200 to 1,000 miles, and also at 2,000 to 4,000 miles. Both detonations should occur near the geomagnetic equator. Satellites were to be placed in equatorial, up to 30 degrees, and polar, up to 70 degrees, orbits, with perigees of roughly 322 kilometers, 200 miles, and apogees of roughly 2,900 kilometers, 1,800 miles, or greater. Funding was provided by the Armed Forces Special Weapons Project, (AFSP), the predecessor of today's Defense Threat Reduction Agency, DTRA. The United States Navy Task Force 88 was formed on the 28th of April 1958. TF-88 was organized solely to conduct Operation Argus. Once Argus was completed, the task force was dissolved and its records dispersed. Some of these records have been destroyed or lost in the intervening time period. USS Norton Sound was a United States Navy guided missile ship responsible for missile launching functions. She also served as a training facility for crews involved in the testing. The X-17A missiles to be used in the test were unfamiliar to those conducting the tests. USS Albemarle, fresh out of an overhaul, was not listed on the TF-88 order. She set out to the Atlantic, supposedly on check down. USS Warrington, in conjunction with Burt, Hammerberg, and Courtney maintained a weather picket 463 kilometers west of the task force provided a plane guard for Tarawa during flight operations and carried out standard destroyer functions such as surface security and search and rescue. USS Tarawa served as overall command of the operation with her commander serving as task group commander. USS Neosho refueled task force ships during the operation. She was also outfitted with Air Force MSQ-1A radar. USS Salamani returned to the United States upon arrival at TF-88 and did not participate in any shots. Two satellite launches were attempted in order to obtain data from these high-altitude tests. Explorer 4 was successfully launched on the 26th of July. About 1,800 kilometers southwest of Cape Town, South Africa, USS Norton Sound launched three modified X-17A missiles armed with 1.7 kilotons with 25 nuclear warheads into the upper atmosphere where high altitude nuclear explosions took place. Due to the South Atlantic anomaly, the Van Allen radiation belt is closer to the Earth's surface at that location. Coordinated measurement programs involving satellite, rocket, aircraft, and surface stations were employed by the services as well as other government agencies and various contractors worldwide. There were many tracking systems used by the task force along with these satellites, along with many organizations that helped track these missiles. These included the Naval Research Laboratory, the Army Signal Research and Development Laboratory, the Smithsonian Astrophysical Laboratory, the Army Map Service, the Naval Ordnance Test Station, and the Ballistic Research Laboratory, along with ground tracking stations from the Aleutian Islands 
through the Azores from academic, industrial, and military organizations. The Argus explosions created artificial electron belts resulting from the beta decay of fission fragments. These lasted for several weeks. Such radiation belts affect radio and radar transmissions, damage or destroy arming and fusing mechanisms of intercontinental ballistic missile warheads and endanger crews of orbiting space vehicles. Argus proved the validity of Christofalo's theory. The establishment of an electron shell derived from neutron and beta decay of fission products and ionization of device materials in the upper atmosphere was demonstrated. The tests were first reported by Hanson Baldwin and Walter Sullivan of the New York Times on the 19th of March 1959, headlining it as the greatest scientific experiment ever conducted. The tests were announced the following year, but the full results and documentation of the tests were not declassified until the 30th of April 1982.